So this video is how to replace a TSI pressure device with the Cetra Flex Hot Wire Replacement Kit. Um, in this box, we have the Flex Hot Wire Replacement Kit. You can see that here with the part number, Flex 0R2 WBHM. So this is a monitoring only version, but it includes the monitor and all of the components you need to do this replacement. So you open it up. You're gonna have your calibration shirt for this device, which is this traceable. You're gonna have a quick start guide with instructions for how to do this. And then here on the left side, you're gonna have the cover that goes over the previous pressure location with the Cetra 265. And then you're also going to have the cover that gets rid of the hole on the inside of the space. And then here you actually have your Cetra monitor with the actual extension ring so you can put this sticking off the wall because the box that the pressure utilizes is not large enough for this. And then the last thing in your box is going to be actually your accessories kit, which we'll open up and show you the details of that in a moment. So your kit here comes with all your removable connectors that you need for the electrical connections. It comes with the Cetra logos that go over your boxes. And it comes with all of your hardware for electrical connections and for screwing everything back into the wall. All right, what's that for here? So the kit comes with uh, removable connectors for the flex monitor. So starting from left to right, on the left you have your analog input, which will be used to connect the transducer from that's up in the ceiling that we installed in the old over the wall, over the door box. Um, the L2, L1 will be our power connector for the power that we're going to take from the original power that was already in the box on the wall for the monitor. And then our MSTP connector, which we just pull, discussed pulling new wiring for that because this used to be a lawn uh, device. So for this install, you're going to need a pair of wire cutters, a wire stripper, a very small flat head, a small, another small flat, but a little bit larger, and then a regular sized Phillips and then uh, optional three Wago connectors if you don't want to use wire nuts. So when you start this installation, you're going to have a pressure or monitor on the wall similar to this, or maybe an RPM 10, 20, or 30. And then above the door to your space, you will have a connector similar to a box, similar to the one you have up here on both sides, on the inside and outside. First thing to do is to remove this box before it hits you. To do that, you have to remove the three screws on the front of the face. Uh, this particular monitor is missing a cover that slides into place over these screws. You have to slide that out of the way and then you can get to these three screws. When you get that off, then you need to disconnect the quick disconnect connectors and you can just tuck them back in the wall for the moment. We'll reuse those in a minute. So on each side of your door, you're gonna have a uh, pressure pickup similar to this that we will remove here in just a moment and replace with the Cetra version. To remove it, you're just going to slide the door off to the right and then there's a screw here in this hole that we will undo. Once you remove the cover, there are two screws to remove the green connector. On the other side of the door is a very similar panel. Do the same thing. 
slide to the left because this one is installed the other direction. In this case, it may slide to right. Remove the screw. So this side does not have any electronics. So there's nothing else you need to do here. You just need this open for passing through the pressure tubing um, in the next step. So the next step is to connect our pressure transducer to the existing wiring. To do this, you're gonna utilize the red and black wires on the far right here. Uh, the kit comes with two blue wire nuts that you can utilize, but in this implementation, at this location, they prefer to use Wago connectors. So you're gonna see the use of Wago connectors in this video. Take note, you don't actually have to remove all of the wires. You only have to remove the two that you're going to use. So here we're installing the Wago connectors onto the wall wire side. All right. So here we have the Cetra cover with the 265 transducer inside of it. Um, you can see here that you have pre-stripped black and white connectors for the analog output off that that will connect to our wall and then a piece of silicone tubing that we will pass through the wall for the pressure pickup inside the room. So first pass the pressure tubing through the wall. You do have to get around the hot wire that is inside the wall. So sometimes the pass through can take a little bit of finesse. There we go, we got it. Now we're gonna connect our analog output off of our transducer into our Wago connectors. Red to red, black to black. And we're gonna keep track of which wires we hooked up to what up here. So we make sure we can connect them correctly to the monitor down on the wall. Now that everything's connected, we can install the box on the wall, tuck everything in. We usually, you need to make sure that on the box, if you can see, can you put the box up there, other side? Yeah, make sure that the pressure pickup, you can see the brass fitting there is facing down. After you get the box on, the Cetra kit comes with a new screw that's a little shorter than the old one. Secure. And then you need to put on the logo. Snaps right in and you're finished. Now we're inside our OR on the inside to install the cover on this side and our second pressure pickup. First, check the length, and you may need to trim the pressure tubing. Connect the pressure tubing to the brass fitting inside the back cover. And place the cover on in the same fashion that we did on the other side. In this side, the um, pressure pickup will end up facing up due to the orientation that the original TSI plate is installed in. And then we need to put in our Cetra nameplate, which will be upside down due to the way that the base plate was installed in this location. All right, so this install, this device is a lawn device. The old 8630s and 8631s were lawn. In this instance, we had a field server device that was converting the lawn to an MSTP trunk back to our Siemens controller in this instance. So what we're doing right now is we're gonna connect to, we're gonna utilize that wiring for our MSTP for our flex monitor. So what we're doing is it turns out that this one is, needs to be daisy chained with a second monitor somewhere else. So we're actually using the original lawn wire here to pull through two new wires for the uh, um, for our connection. Okay. 
Once you have that done, we can move on with the actual wiring of our connections here at the monitor. Make sure that, you know, you connect all of your MSTP wiring in the ceiling correctly as well. So we got to strip all of our wires back before we can connect them to our connectors. We're going to connect the MSTP wires. So since in this case, we have a additional device down line from us, we have to connect two white wires, two in each one here for the MSTP connection, standard MSTP installation. Note that colors are dependent upon how you connect on the other end at the MSTP trunk or at your previous device. You cannot follow the color coding that we've done here, though what we've done here is common. So now we're going to add our um, power connector. So we're going to remove the wires from the original connector here. Put those into ours. Again, the wiring colors are dependent upon how you're connected to your transformer in the ceiling or wherever it is located. In this case, white was 24 volt. the 24 volt and the black is the common in this instance. Show us that. There we go. Now we've got our power done. Next thing to do is to connect our sensor to its removable connector. We chose the black and the red up top for that. So we're going to disconnect those. Now you can see we have the common and analog input uh, with the resistor across it and the red in the 24 volts and analog input, uh, the black on analog input. To install our monitor, we're gonna need to take off the original back plate. Using a standard Phillips screwdriver. standard two gang or four by four box here in the wall is not large enough to fit our monitor. So we're going to install this extension ring, pass all your cables through and the extension ring attaches directly to the original two gang box. One screw on the top, one screw on the bottom. Now we're going to actually install our monitor. So we're gonna connect our, use our quick disconnect connectors and plug them into the back in the appropriate locations. There's the MSTP. Then our analog input. We always do the power last, just in case there's something wrong. Let's see the back of that. See the final connections. All right, after that, we took our wires back in the wall. Remove the faceplate of the Cetra off of the installation box. So in your kit, you're gonna have four metal screws about five eighths inches long self-tapping sheet metal screws. Those are for installing the box onto the extension ring. The spacing of the uh, screw locations on the extension ring will center the monitor on the box uh, on their own.
Make sure everything's snug. And then install your faceplate by pressing firmly at the four, cor four corners. The next step is to set up and configure the monitor. Initially, you'll be asked to enter a supervisor passcode for the first time at this site they want to use. Three. One, two, three, four, it looks like. Highly secure. No one will ever guess it. We're just going to put in a supervisor password for now. And now we're going to start with our setup. First, we go to device configuration, inputs and outputs. We're going to verify that our transducer is set up correctly. Since this kit is intended for this, it should be pre-set up as you see here, milliamps, 4 to 20, 0.2 to 0.2 on the range on the bottom, into the water column, and three decimal places. We just need to configure the MSTP. First, select settings, put in your supervisor passcode, device configuration, network. So what we did in this case is we knew the instance ID from the previous device, so we just overrode the instance ID of this device with that. Same thing for MAC address. Copying the other one, that way that this easily transfers to our BAS without too much setup. We're sticking with the standard baud rate. And we hit update. Monitor reboot. And after that, we should be able to see it on our front end. At this point, you just need to set up your monitor on your front end, whether that be regardless of who that is. Uh, so we won't cover that in this video because that depends upon your specific manufacturer and vendor for that product. At this point though, your monitor is ready to go. If you have temp, humidity, or other factors to bring it over BACnet, you can set those up using the BACnet settings and using our standard operating manual.